All right, folks, welcome back. We are uh, jumping back into the section 10.4 uh, example problems, and this set of videos is epic. We are covering so much material in here. Uh, 10 example problems, uh, which is going to take us just, it's going to take us a long time to get through all these, but I think what you'll find is that you are set up for success in WebAssign after doing these. Okay, so uh, this problem, um, we're given some information about an angle theta, but let's take a look over here um, to how this relates back to WebAssign. This problem is going to help you out with WebAssign problem 10. And this one, it's a, it's a, nat a natural log problem. So this is LN, natural log. And uh, you're going to be like, well, what the heck is a natural log problem shoehorned into a, a chapter on trigonometry? And really the trigonometry part is all I'm going to talk about here and then basically you just have to substitute in what you find from the trig you have to substitute that back into a natural log function so I, I think that's that's pretty easy to do the trig is is the, is the new part the challenging part so I'm given this information uh, secant of theta equals x over 3 for angle theta which is in quadrant 1 and how do I know it's in quadrant 1 because quadrant 1 falls between 0 and pi over 2 so I'm just going to make a quick note of that. Uh, this is quadrant one. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to ask you to do here is express the tangent of theta in terms of x. Um, I'm going to write down a, a quick thing here that I want you to think about uh, as you do problems like this. So bear with me here for just a second. Okay, folks, a uh, long statement here, but I think it's worth spending a couple seconds to talk about this. Um, this is uh, the proverbial Mr. Vast statement. Hey, a picture is worth a thousand words, so make sure if you have an opportunity, draw a picture of a problem to help you organize your thoughts. Um, anytime you're given one of these trig ratios that's expressed as a function of x, I think you need to draw the picture. And the reason for that is it's going to help you organize your information. For, for every problem like this, we have an angle theta, and let's go ahead and graph that. We're going to graph, I'm just going to draw random theta in quadrant one. Okay, so I've got my theta in quadrant one, and then th there's a right triangle associated with that. So I have a vertical leg, and I have a horizontal leg. And if we can find the measurements uh, of each of those lengths, we can solve any trig problem about this angle theta that, that we might be asked. So let's take a look at this. So there's my angle in quadrant one. Now let's go back and see how the secant of theta relates to this. Well, <clears throat> secant of theta equals x over three. I know that the cosine of theta equals one over the secant of theta. So that tells me that the cosine of theta equals 3 over x. Now that's going to get me started on this problem because I know that the cosine ratio is the x-coordinate divided by the radius. And if it were a unit circle, that radius would be 1. So let me go ahead and add that information to my picture. My, my hor horizontal component here, the x-component is 3, and my radius is x. So now that I have that information, I can come up with an algebraic expression for this vertical leg. I know the Pythagorean theorem says that 3 squared plus that vertical piece squared has to equal the hypotenuse squared, which is x. So we do a little bit of mathematical manipulation there, and we get this vertical leg equals x squared minus 9 the square root of that, x squared minus 9. Okay, so again, why is it really important to do this? Because this picture now with a, a horizontal leg of 3, a vertical leg of square root of x squared minus 9, and a hypotenuse of x, I can answer any question about the trigonometry of this angle theta. In fact, uh, let's go back and answer, answer the original question now. The original question was tan 
uh, theta in terms of x. I can do that right now. The tangent of theta equals the opposite leg, which is the square root of x squared minus 9, divided by the adjacent leg, which is 3. So there you go. Uh, I've answered this question. Uh, two, two last reminders here about this one. Um, this is not the exact problem in WebAssign. The exact problem in WebAssign involves an input to a natural log function. But all the work I've done here, you'll be able to use for that problem in WebAssign. Last thing I'll say here is uh, I made this note that says make sure the radius of your right triangle is equal to, let me make sure the radius of the circle is equal to the hypotenuse of your right triangle. Right. So please keep that in mind as you're doing these problems because if you don't have the radius of the circle equal to the hypotenuse of your right triangle, you will get an incorrect solution. All right, that's it for example four. Let's uh, move on to example five. With example 5, we are going to be uh, helping out here with web assigned questions 12 and 13. And these are applications of half angle formulas. I'm going to flip back to our uh, reference page and see uh, if we can find the half angle formulas. Well, there they are on the second page, half angle formulas. Um, these are not required to be memorized. These will be given to you on a test if you need them. Um, one thing to keep note of is for each of these formulas, there's a choice to be made whether or not you need to choose the positive version of that square root or the negative version. And the choice of that depends on which quadrant the terminal side of theta over 2 lies in. So we'll be talking about that uh, with this next example. Okay, find the exact value of the following. Uh, sine of 5 pi over 8. Well, unfortunately, 5 pi over 8 is not in our unit so it's not one of the 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 it's not one of the angles on our unit circle so we're going to have to figure out how 5 pi over 8 might be related to another one of the angles that we know something about and i, I think this one's pretty easy to figure this out uh, if you look at 5 pi over 8 well that's really one half of the angle 5 pi over 4 Okay, so now let's take, so, so we're going to use the half angle formula of 5 pi over 4 to find out what the sine of 5 pi over 8 is. But the first thing I need to do is figure out which quadrant is 5 pi over 8 in. So which quadrant is that in? And, and I'm going to do just a quick little calculation here. Um, eventually this will become intuitive to you, but for now you might need to run through this calculation. So... 5 pi over 4, that's in quadrant 3. Okay, so let's say we have an angle in quadrant 3. So we know that that uh, quadrant has an upper boundary of 3 pi over 2 and a lower boundary of plain old pi. So now uh, 5 pi over 8 is half of theta. So let's see what happens when we cut each piece of this in half. So that means theta over 2 lies between pi over 2 and 3 pi over 4. Oh, that tells me theta over 2 is in quadrant 2. Okay, so theta over 2 is in quadrant 2. And that's something that uh, again, this time I'm going through that really uh, slowly to show you specifically how you can figure out which quadrant theta over 2 is in. Uh, but event, uh, after you do a couple examples, it might become a little uh, more obvious to you. Uh, so now that I'm thinking of this, quadrant 2, uh, well, that's got a sine ratio that's positive. So when I use the half angle formula, I'm going to be picking the positive version of that. And let's just take a look at that right now. So the sine of theta over 2. That half angle formula states the following. Uh, we're going to be looking at the positive square root of 1 minus cosine of theta all divided by 2. So, and remember, our theta is 5 pi over 4 and theta over 2 is 5 pi over 8. Perhaps that's worth noting here. That's theta. 
and that's theta over 2. Okay, so uh, I, the theta over 2 is 5 pi over 8, and that's going to be equal to the positive square root of 1 minus the cosine of 5 pi over 4, all divided by 2. Well, let's see. The cosine of 5 pi over 4 is negative root 2 over 2. So this is 1 minus negative root 2 over 2 all divided by 2. And let's do a, mat a little bit of mathematical uh, manipulation here. So I have, I'm going to rewrite everything that's under the square root symbol. I have 1 divided by 2. And then the opposite of negative root 2 over 2, that's positive root 2 over 2, but I have to divide that by 2. So this is going to be plus root 2 over 4. And uh, let's go ahead and combine this so we have one nice uh, fraction underneath the square root symbol. Uh, one half, if I, if, if I want a con common denominator with 4, this would be 2 over 4. So that's going to give me 2 over 4 plus square root of 2 over 4. Again, this is still all under the square root symbol. And now I think we're ready to simplify this even further. So sine of 5 pi over 8 is going to equal 2 plus root 2. That's all in the square root and the numerator. My denominator is the square root of 4, which just equals 2. So hey, that's it. Uh, congratulations. You just used your first half angle formula to find out what the sine of 5 pi over 8 was. Now, I showed a lot of steps here. I wouldn't be surprised if as you do this problem, maybe you don't need to show as many steps. I showed a lot of the algebra there. Um, but let's go ahead and take a look at example 6 here. Uh, example 6, I'm going to find the tangent of 7 pi over 8. And I'm going to use the same procedure uh, that I just did, but I'm going to go through it a whole lot faster for you. So here we go. There you have it, folks. We just used the half angle formula for tangent to find the exact value of the tangent of 7 pi over 8. Uh, it's not a ha very happy looking number. It's the negative square root of the quantity 2 minus root 2 over 2 plus root 2. But that is our final answer. Uh, let me just zoom out there so we can see everything we've just done on this example uh, 5 and 6 there. There it is in all its glory. Uh, and let's go ahead and shut this video down and stay tuned for uh, the next video for example 7 through 10.